We've had a few instances of where quite proficient riders riding a disc brake road bike have come to some sort of problems when they've been braking going through a corner when that corner has had undulations in it. And this is like a phenomena that seems to be related to disc brake bikes. So let's roll our intro and let's have a discussion. What the hell's going on here? Why are these guys, when they're going into corners, there's a slight undulation, the wheels are locking up and then they're losing control of the, the vehicle. And in one case with North Cal, they're having significant injuries. Well, this comes down to the different design between a mountain bike and a road bike. Now, a mountain bike generally has active suspension. And what that means is, it means the suspension is actually put onto the bike and you have shock absorbers and you have springs. Now, I won't go into the reasons why you have to have a shock absorber and a spring. That's for another video. And if you really want me to talk about that sort of stuff, I can do a video on that. But for the information involved with this video, I just want to talk about the different types of suspension. So a mountain bike has active suspension and a road bike has passive suspension, which means the frame of the bike is your compliance on the road. It is your suspension. Now, the difference between a rim brake bike and a disc brake bike is they've moved the braking point from the top of the fork, which is right near the bearing. So the fork is free to flex in a braking situation to moving the brake to the hub of the wheel where the braking is actually loading up the fork whilst you're braking. And that's the same with the rear of the bike as well. And plus that braking force is off center. So we're gonna have some slight pulling of the frame to one side. That may be marginal, but it is still there. Now, why is this making a difference when they're braking? So we have three situations here. We have a mountain bike, we have a rim brake bike, road bike, and then we have a disc brake road bike. Now the difference is, is on the mountain bike, the braking system is independent of the frame, so it's moving with active suspension. On the rim brake bike, the brake is not affecting the frame to flex and move because of where the mounting of the rim brake is done. And then we have a disc brake bike where the braking force is on the extremity of the frame, which is normally designed to have that passive suspension. But now when you're under braking, that braking force is loading up the frame, which would normally have been used to give some compliance on an undulating road. So in the design of the rim brake bike and the mountain bike, we have suspension that is free to move under braking. So when you start braking the bike, the, the suspension on the mountain bike can move up and down and take up the undulations, and it's not affecting the braking system, or the braking system's not affecting the suspension. Those things are running completely independent. And that's the same with a rim brake bike because where it's mounted, the undulations and the braking are unaffected because the frame or the passive suspension of the frame moving is working independent from the bike. But on a disc brake bike, it's not. The braking forces are loading up the frame and they're not working independent. So what you're actually losing is under braking, you're losing compliance of the disc brake bike. So how does this equate to an uh, undulating, undulating, <laughs> I'll get there guys, undulating road. Well, the reason why it is, is because if you're coming through a corner and you're braking, and you're pretty close to the limit, as you go through the undulations, normally what would happen is the suspension would take that variation up in the road and your wheels would stay in contact with the road because that is what suspension is designed to do. Suspension is not for comfort. We talk about compliance and all this sort of stuff, but really suspension of any vehicle is designed to keep your wheels in contact with the road so you can either brake or drive and you're not gonna lose traction. But in a disc brake bike, because the frame now is effectively more rigid because the, the braking system has loaded up the fork and it's loaded up the rear triangle, your compliance is significantly reduced. 
And if you're breaking close to the point of lockup, then it's very easy as you go for that undulation and the the suspension's trying to take up that undulation, the weight then comes off the road because the suspension can't work effectively due to the braking forces from the brakes. So therefore, you, you momentarily lose traction of the wheel on the road and of course once you lose traction there's no force to keep those wheels rotating so they lock up so then when the, the weight goes back onto the road you have a lock up situation and then you lose control of the vehicle now two pretty recent incidents of this from very competent riders are one there was vegan cyclist, he was riding down, it looks like he was riding down some sort of mountain or hill or something like that, and in California I would imagine, and he was filming his mate who was riding in front, and he went around the corner and there was an undulation in that corner, not a, not a pothole, not anything like that that would, that would overpower the passive suspension on the bicycle, it was just an undulation in the road. And what happened was, is his back wheel then locked up momentarily, he had to change direction. He didn't lose control of the vehicle, but because of a change of direction, he had to run off the road. And then because of the vegetation on the side of the road, which was dragging on his front wheel, and there was probably some un you know, differing road surfaces, it flipped the bike and he ended up coming off the bike. It seems like he didn't get hurt too badly, which, was, which is a good thing. But then we also have something more recent, which is the North Cow accident. So as you can see, not the best outcome for me, not what I was hoping for in the season opener. But if we go back and we play this one more time in slow motion, um, the audio actually tells a bigger story. So my hubs make this obnoxiously loud sound when I'm freewheeling, when I'm coasting. And then you can hear me actually grab the brakes and start to slide. So why was everybody slowing down into that corner? I still don't know the answer to that. 99 times out of 100 people are speeding up with 450 meters to go, not slowing down. I did everything I could. You can see from this different angle, um, you can see me start to slide before I crash. When you're riding close to the limit, can have some impediment. And the impediment is that the, the frame that's been designed to take up the imperfections in the road, the undulations in the road, can't work as effectively as it, as it could on a rim brake bike because you're braking and the frame is being loaded and that's compromising the passive compliance of the frame as you're riding along. And what it's doing is it's allowing the bike or the bike wheels to lock up when you're on undulating surfaces. Obviously, if you're on a smooth surface, it's gonna work just fine. But in those situations where you haven't got a perfect road, you know, there may be like a, a, a slight, you know how you have different surfaces underneath the road, there might've been some subsidence to the road where there's a little bit of a dip in the road, or there may have been a tree root that's pushed part of the road up and then there's a dip over the other side of it. In those situations, when you're riding and you're trying to brake close to the limit, the disc brake bikes seem to not be able to give the rider the control or feel that they want in those situations. And I think this is, this is something that uh, needs to be acknowledged because I'm not knocking on disc brakes. As I've said in many videos, in poor weather conditions, they can be a real asset. And for people like commuters and things like that, or just us people who just like to ride around, they work fine. But they putting these disc brakes on bikes that are costing almost as much as a small car. And they're claiming that these are the ultimate road bikes from these manufacturers. They are the top echelon. They are the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis of bikes. And what we're seeing is, is that the design has some flaws. Now, people, I know people get a bit upset when I have a little bit of a go at disc brakes, but you've got to understand that disc brakes are not the be all to end all. They have some pros and they have some cons. Now the pros are that you know you can you can run wider tires as many people have 
have commented. Now, as far as I'm concerned, on a top-end road race bike, if you're putting wide tyres on it, you're defeating the purpose. Wider tyres are far less more aerodynamic, and there's a point where you get to about 25 mil. When you go above 25 mil, you're starting to compromise the ultimate speed of the bicycle. Now, you can believe whatever you want to believe, and you can talk about the rolling resistance, but the rolling resistance is a lot less significant than the aero drag when you're riding a race bike. So that might be fine on gravel bikes and all those sorts of things where disc brakes are a really good option. But on a ultimate road racing bike, I don't think that they perfect them yet. So guys, leave your comments down below. And of course, smash, smash, smash that like button and subscribe button if you really like this sort of cycling content. And I'm gonna leave it right there, guys. Catch you next vid. Cheers.